Hello everyone and welcome to this episode, the career one of the Women Talking About Learning podcast. Firstly, we want to thank everybody who's liked and subscribed to the podcast. You help other people find us and we appreciate everything that you do. This is an unusual episode since we have two former guests who are returning this week. Our first guest is Dr Sarah Thompson. Sarah is the Chair of the Master of Science in Counselling and Human Services Programme at Post University and has been teaching in higher education since 2013. In addition to possessing her doctorate degree in psychology, Sarah recently earned another graduate degree, her Master's of Education in Learning Design and Technology. Sarah serves as a guardian ad litem in South Carolina, USA, and an advocate for women who have experienced domestic and intimate partner violence. In her free time, Sarah can be found on the beach with her senior pup, Miss Maud, or relaxing at home with Miss Maud and her pussycat, Good Kitty. Sarah was a guest on the Imposter Syndrome episode as the first speaker. Our second speaker is Kate Graham. Kate is Head of Content, Labs and Insight at Unleash. Kate has worked in L&D and HR for over 15 years, most recently with the Fosway Group before Unleash. Kate is social chair of the world's leading L&D event, Learning Technologies, co-host of Learning Now TV, and a regular contributor to the Training Journal podcast. She's also a seasoned awards judge and long-time contributor and writer for numerous industry publications, as well as co-founder of the Women in Learning movement. Kate, you may remember, was a speaker on the conference episode. This was recorded in June 2021, before Kate started her role with Unleash, and it's a fascinating conversation about careers and learning. This is Women Talking About Learning. This is Sarah and Kate talking about careers. Okay, so my name's Kate Graham, and normally after I introduce myself on something like a podcast, I would say where I work and what I do. And the reason that I am taking part in the Career One uh, podcast for the Women in Learning, Women Talking About Learning podcast, is because I am this week between jobs. Um, so I am transitioning from a role at Fosway Group, uh, industry analyst, to a role as head of content labs and insights at Unleash. Um, so that is my basis for wanting to talk about this particular topic is because I am at a bit of an inflection point in my own career Um, but I'm joined today by Sarah and I'm keen to understand your drivers for wanting to talk about this particular topic as well. It's such a wonderful thing to meet you Kate. Um, This is our our first time meeting each other and having this conversation so what a great forum to do it in. So I'm Dr. Sarah Thompson. I work in higher education and I was, I consider myself a late bloomer to my career. And certainly the career that I I started with after my children um, were middle school and high school is, has evolved into something completely different. So, you know, thinking of careers as as a female, this discussion, it, it's a powerful one. It could go in so many different ways that um, I'm excited to, to see how our stories have evolved and, and how we can relate to other women. And yeah, this is going to be good. Yeah, well, the first thing you said earlier when we started talking off air was, you know, that you kind of put your career on pause, you stayed home with your kids. You know, and that's a really interesting point because I did the exact opposite. So I had, I ran my own business when I had my son. I took six weeks off and that was that. And I was back in, not full time. Um, I've juggled part time since he was born. So seven and a bit years, seven and a half years. But yeah, I did the polar opposite. So I think there's a lot of really interesting comparisons to be had there. And the choices that we make as women and you know as mothers often about our careers are are you know so varied and there is no right or wrong way and I often say I would love to be in a position later on in my own career where I could go in to colleges or schools and talk to girls specifically but you know also also boys about thinking about family flexibility I I think at school there's a very 
tried and tested route of you go to university and then you get a job in a FTSE 100 or, a, you know, in America, one of the leading big companies, and then you work your way up and then you get a corner office and da-da-da. And actually, there are so many ways to think about what good looks like and think about success, what success really means. Right. And I think, you know, I mean, just before I came on this, I'm running around the house trying to find my son's shin pads for football you know and the me- my measure of success really is being able to vaguely stay across everything and having flexibility in what I do and how mm-hmm. I do it is you know is so important to me it's more important than money you know by far uh, and so and and you know I, I guess I'm interested was it a very conscious choice for you to kind of go no I'm gonna wait until my kids are older so you know it's such a it's such a personal decision to 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 say because society in general even today is has expectations of as we know of, of how women should look and how we should dress and how we should speak and what our career should be um you know, I, I was that traditional undergraduate student. I went straight from high school to college and I had my eyes set on going on for a master's degree. And I I met my ex-husband and we had a family and he was in the military. So we spent oh, more than years. I'm, um, a, I'm, I'm a military wife as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, more than 20 years moving around from one duty station to the next. And I... I, I enjoyed being with my children. I, I, I like to learn as well, but um, I wasn't prepared to, to say, okay, I want to go into, I was going for pre-med. Well, then I changed and, and I didn't really know what I wanted. So I think having that time of, of raising my children um, and then it was this, this discussion with a friend of, okay, this is what I want to do. But, you know, I've been through so many different careers, um, you know, as, as a military spouse, volunteering. Um, that was in spending time with my children and raising them and, and to, they're just wonderful young adults right now. Um, and then, and then part-time jobs. And, and then I was a licensed counselor. And then I decided to go into human resources. And now here I am in higher ed. You know, I, I have evolved in a way that what I'm doing is where my passion lies. And I think that's so important. It's not just a job. Um, I, I have a career um, that I'm, I'm proud of. And, and to me, like the sky's the limit. But at the same time, we know that we have our, we have the glass ceiling and we have, we, we have, sometimes we'll have to imposter syndrome. I spoke on that. Um, there's lots of things that for, for females that um, we have to consider when we think about careers. And I would love if it came to a day where all women are supporting one another and, and really empowering others to, to take that leap. And, and, and cause it can be scary. It can, it, it can totally be scary. I mean, you're in between career or jobs right now. Um, so I don't know if you want, if there was anything that led to the change for you or what, what motivated you to, to look elsewhere? Or... Yeah, I didn't. Um, I had just got to a point, obviously lockdown was weird for everybody. Um, and it was very intense. So we were always, my, in my previous role at Frostbite, we were always super busy, the, the back that back quarter of the year September to December but it's also usually interspersed with a lot of travel and um obviously there was none of that last year so it was really super intense and I kind of got to Christmas and was like oh my god you know that was that was major we had some we had custom research we had you know new a new nine grid it was it, it, it was intense and I just got to Christmas and started thinking um, a little bit about you know balance and um, what 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 aspects of my role did I enjoy and what should I be trying to do more of and you know what would I potentially like to speak to my boss about doing less of and then you know sort of in the new year I got approached by two different companies for two very different roles 
um, and had some conversations. And the role with a niche is they have previously run events, massive HR tech business, you know, B2B conferences and mm-hmm. and and exhibitions. And uh, obviously that was wiped out by by COVID. So they've completely pivoted their whole business model. And I've known them for a long time. Um, uh, in terms of some joint research that Fosway does with them and I just really I've always loved their approach they're quite sort of positively disruptive but they're almost kind of back in startup mode in terms of the business model but with a brand and they wanted somebody who knows the industry and there's a lot of potential there and I think in going through a bit of a period of reflection Fosway's in a different period of growth Mm -hmm. and um it's getting much more established and I think I like it I think I like things in that kind of a little bit messy you know maybe a turnaround or or a startup mode kind of situation and um I think there was something about that that really appealed to me and I think I maybe wasn't the right person to take Fosway forward I'm really proud of all the work that I've done there but I think I can go and put my skills to better use elsewhere so it wasn't something that I was looking for but it I kind of I'm a you know I mean it sounds a bit naff but I'm a big believer in things happening for a reason and I'm a big I'm a big believer in gut instinct and um you know and I have like super supportive people so Andrew uh, you know who runs this podcast when I made the decision to leave my own business a few years ago I kind of felt very um nervous about how that would go down with people that I knew and I relocated we relocated home military um and um and Andrew said to me at the time you know I think it's really brave and he didn't even remember saying that to me and I reminded him of that kind of like five years later and I said I've never forgotten that and he didn't even remember you know saying it but I think to myself I've been saying well it's time to be brave it's it's time for a change and so yeah so I start next week so I am sort of you know yeah between laptops yeah. you know sort of like phones you know all of that kind of weird betwixt and between um but I'm you know super excited about the potential and getting my sleeves rolled up and getting stuck into something mm-hmm. else but within a space that I know so there is an element of comfort you know I thought I have a great network I know what I'm talking um about and all of that kind of thing obviously it's in a completely different context so that's the change but there are some great people there and there are some great supporters of the brand and the company and yeah so there's an element of it's new and it's a little bit scary but it's not completely unknown if that makes sense right Absolutely. And I, I think that there's many, many women out there that are in the same or very similar type of situation. And to be able to know that it, it is possible to to switch careers, I mean, completely switch careers or find a new job where you have that drive and that passion and follow that gut instinct. Because I, I, I'm a firm believer in that. I, I feel like our, our bodies tell us a lot. Um, and sometimes as women, we're, we're taking, we're nurturers, we're taking care of everyone else. And then when it comes to us, we're, we're kind of like at the bottom of the barrel and, and we're the last ones to help ourselves um, because we're spending the time helping others. Yeah, it's interesting, My because my husband works in, so he was in the Air Force and then he came out a couple of years ago um, and was working for um, a big American aerospace company. And obviously, the wheels fell off that last year and so he was furloughed initially and, and then made redundant last year and then he found another job like pretty much straight away but had to settle into that and so that was all you know we're, we're in a very fortunate position it wasn't the end of the world um and I'm I'm very grateful about that but I think that I spent a lot of last year worrying about that and obviously trying to stay on top of my own job and Mm -hmm. you know we all have the homeschooling and all that kind of stuff and so this year for me it's really interesting because I've kind of pursued these conversations about the two different roles but I've also 
uh, started training again in uh, with a personal trainer. Um, I've got fitter. I've lost a bit of weight. I've kind of invested that time back in myself, mm-hmm. and I th- but I feel so much better for it. And it, it, there's that element of being a little bit selfish. It's the whole oxygen fitting your own oxygen mask first analogy. Right. And I think that as women, it's really easy to get subsumed sometimes, but especially when you've got kids, um, to get subsumed by that. And you know, but I've got more energy and I feel more on top of my game for having invested that time in, uh, it, you know, it and space in myself. Like so, like I say, the exercise. I've been reading more books. Um, you know, all of those kind of things. Just I, I've just been making that carving out. It's hard to do, but once you sort yeah. of like any kind of habit, I think once you start to do it and right. move at that time, then and I jealously guard it. Like if it's my turn to have a lie in on the weekend, I will either sleep or I'll stay upstairs and read. Mm-hmm. And I guard that time, you know, really, really closely. And I think that whatever that looks like, you know, it you have to you have to do that. And you have to invest and you have to invest in yourself because otherwise how do you obviously we're in learning so we're we're all going to be um what's the word um advocates of reading and self-improvement and all of that kind of stuff but if you don't stay curious and you don't give yourself that space to even think about what am I even curious about then you won't you won't yeah you won't you'll stay sort of stuck I think Sure. And, and, you know, finding the balance is, is inherently important. Um, and I, I like how you said that you were carving out time for yourself. Um, you know, my children are grown. I, it, it's me and two fur babies in my home. And um, so I, I, some of the extra responsibilities that I've already had for the past 20 something years, I don't have those right now with, with children gone from my home. Uh, so I'm able to really carve out that time. And I, I know that it's super important to, um, to take that me time. I, I, I know as, as a parent, um, I, I put my children first. I, you know, I remember working on my, on where my master's degree from a soccer field. And anytime that my son was not with his foot on the ball or if he was goalkeep with his knocking that ball out of, out of, out of the, the goal, I was reading. So I, I, even if it was a page and so just being able to find that balance, but COVID, as you mentioned, it really, it changed how we, we, we work, how we play our, our leisure, all of it. Um, and, and so there are still people, um, and it really depends on locality. Um, like, the U.S. In, in South Carolina, where I live, we, we've been open really for many months, um, and so the restrictions haven't been like other like other states or other countries. Uh, but we have people now that now, you know, women who who are trying to manage children at home with with homeschooling or or virtual learning, and what do we do with them during the summer and and how do I work and where do I get that balance and and sometimes it takes that creativity and 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 you know as a as a counselor one one message I would try to to send to my my clients and I generally worked only with women um was even if it was only 15 minutes find 15 minutes for yourself um if it's going for a walk, if it's hiding in a closet, whatever it is, because then that helps to, to, to regroup and helps you to do whatever your job, whatever your career is, all the better. Yeah. You, you got to be able to reset that mind. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I think, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the kind of the female recession post COVID um there's a lot of statistics McKinsey have got some really good stuff maybe um Andrew can link to it in the in the show notes they did a really good report about three quarters of the way through 2020 on the impact of women um in in the uh, kind of lockdown period you know the majority of the childcare still falling on on the women and you know but still juggling you know often you know high pressure calls and and things at home kind of sat in the midst of chaos just making sure that there's something decent behind them and then all the messes on the floor 
and that's not exclusive to women by any stretch of the imagination but it does seem that the the majority from the stats the majority of that burden has fallen on women and i think what we've got now is an opportunity uh, you know in terms of there's all this talk about the future of work and the hybrid workplace and all of this kind of stuff but i think to kind of you know if you want the best talent you now no longer have to live within an hour of the office right i think that's been established so then i think the next barrier to come down will be around you know do you have to be online nine to five uh, you know, I, I, I walk my kids to school every morning. It's important to me that we walk. It's important for them uh, in terms of fresh air, but it's also important to me because I don't commute. Mm -hmm. um, and so I ne I'm never, ever online before sort of quarter past half past nine. Um, I, but I often will, um, you know, I'll log off half past five, six o'clock, have tea with the kids, and I'll often log on later and finish, finish work. Now, that doesn't work for everybody. Right. that works for me i'm not a morning person i'm never going to get up at six o'clock and be productive like i just no um i'm the flip i'm the opposite <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so so it, it works differently and yeah. i think this kind of victorian model of education and um and work uh that is the next big barrier because i i think if you want to have the best but people are kind of committed elsewhere and the kind of you know, the research that we do at Fosway, or I did, uh, you know, I'm still moving into that that past tense with, with Fosway, but, um, you know, we've done a lot of looking at kind of the talent mobility piece, and that is, uh, you know, the investment in talent mobility solutions is going through the roof, because organisations understand now, actually, if you might have great people, but you need some level of flexibility about how you use them, you know, workforce planning is another really boring sounding area of HR tech but again it's really important because if people can swap shifts and work when it is convenient around them and their families but still get their job done it you know that's a game changer for a lot of people and suddenly organizations have access to different talent pools and people have access to different jobs and different careers and so that for me is I think big picture that's all really exciting it's not going to happen overnight right I, I hope I hope that that is going to be a frontier that we start to tackle yeah you know in, in the U.S. I'm finding more um, careers are being have the ability to work remotely um, whether or not it's full-time remotely or it's on a on a hybrid type of schedule or they maybe need to go into the office um, one or two days a week at, at the same time, though, you know, looking at through LinkedIn and reading these news articles, more employers are are have found that their their employee um, their the work that they're doing, the productivity is is the quality is so much better because people are not rushed of okay, I need to commute an hour and a half to get to work. And what if I have a flat tire? Or what if, you know, my coffee spills on my clothes and, and all that. So I, I, I'm hopeful that more employers and again, we're, we're talking about women, women in learning that will allow us in, in, in using us as all females, all women um, who have have children at home or have parents that they need to take care of um, or another relative that they can still continue on in their career. They're in that career for a reason and, and, but also have that balance. Um, there, I, I mean, I remember, you know, when I was the HR director of a YMCA, I was putting in a lot of hours. Um, you know, it wasn't unheard of that I would go in and get my workout done and by eight o'clock at my desk and I'm there till seven o'clock at night if, and then taking homework um, and then trying to, to catch up with my own children. So, you know, COVID again has changed how we do things, but I also, I'm, I'm hopeful that it continues to allow people to do what they do and do it well from the comforts of their own home but also knowing that they can scoot out and take care of a, a doctor's appointment or watch their children or walk their children to school. Um, and I, I, I think as well, it's about, I mean, I'm reading a really interesting book about boundaries at the moment. And uh, you know, I mean, it references mostly like personal boundaries, but I think there's also, you know, if you can 
it's not possible for everybody I know but if you can start to assert yourself and be get recognized for delivering regardless of like when or how you work mm-hmm. I mean you know I think everybody would joke uh, at first when I say oh you know don't put an early meeting in Kate's diary well don't put an early meeting in Kate's diary and you know I mean there's that big banner isn't there there's the guy with the sign it says that meeting could have been an email and it's like you know well for me the email could have been a zoom chat um or a team chat like and I think and I was very much because I'd been there a long time and I had a kind of you know social capital within the company I would push back on a lot of stuff I don't want to spend all day on calls because I can't create and write and do what I do if I'm back to back so I would really be proactive about those boundaries I have kind of side hustle things that I do um like hosting learning now tv and doing uh, the training journal podcast and, and various bits of other time women in learning and again you know some of that would be on work's time but then I would do work on my time and that was always a give and take like that was never ever an issue because I was trusted to behave like an adult and right. deliver on, on what I had to deliver and I just think but that, that trust is a two-way street but it's almost don't ask don't get and I think sometimes I I see other women and they struggle to feel that they can be that assertive or they can can be you know they can push back on these norms that right. we have all day calls or or whatever it is or 6 p.m calls when they should be picking the kids up or, or whatever it is and I think but that like we can architect within reason our own day I mean yes if you work on the shop floor somewhere and you're you're set to shifts or you're serving customers like I totally get that and right. you know and, and that's a different kind of fish but I think you know if you're um kind of like a knowledge worker and you, you you are working from home now I think kind of starting to set some of those boundaries and make things work for you would just relieve a lot of anxiety and a lot of tension and a lot of stress because if you know and again if you're a manager or a leader if you can find a way to trust your people to to do that I, I would imagine again to your point about productivity and engagement and energizing your staff then that's going to be really really powerful so I, like I'm definitely not perfect and some people don't want to even think about the evenings right they want to like they want to log off at 5 p.m and, right. and that's fine right. but I think but whatever works for you I think trying to have that conversation with your your line manager or, or your boss and being open about some of the, the juggle because the juggle, you know I always it say yeah. the juggle is real it whatever really, that is. it really is you know when you were talking and you mentioned um the, talking about the boundaries and, and norms, like, again, like society has this definition of, of how we are supposed to act and behave and think and, and dress. But it also made me think of um, women in general not saying no, that will we'll constantly say, yes, I will do this. Yes, I will do this. And I I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I, it was a couple months ago and I had a fellow colleague um, that put out a, an ask on LinkedIn for some additional help with his um, nonprofit. I'm like, absolutely, absolutely. I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I going to find the time to do that? And then it, unlike you, Kate, I am a, I'm an early riser. I mean, the work I can get done at five o'clock in the morning could be amazing. You eight o'clock at night, this is not your person. So, so, <laughs> oh, right. and then, so after I, I, I committed and, and, and I, I, I liked what they, what they were doing in their mission, all the meetings were being held at eight, eight thirty at night. And I'm just like, I went to one and I'm like, I, I just honestly can't do that. Like this brain cannot function at that time, but it go- really goes back to, to us women and gen- females in general are nurturers. We, we do, we do, we do, we need to. And again, I'm, I, I'm guilty of it, but I, and it's something I need to practice. We need to be able to say right now, I'm not able to do this or, you know, I'm working on this. Can I help you at a different time? Instead of saying, sure, let me take that on. And, and then started having this worry wart and really, what do I do? Where do I find that time? I, you know, I get it, I mean, I was my own boss in my early 30s. Um, 
at a time when I had my first child, my son. And yeah, I was really bad at saying no, like really, really bad. I just say yes to everything. And I think saying yes to a lot of stuff is, has led me on to, you know, probably being, you know, headhunted because I'm quite visible things like, you know, like, like I say, my side hustles, but I have got much better at, from painful experience of being completely overloaded and overwhelmed right. um, to, to, you know, streamlining those. So I, you know, I now try and focus on what I'm focusing on and, um, and, you know, I got, I, like, I had a really nice uh, note a couple of few months ago from a guy who said, hi Kate, I haven't seen you for ages, feel really cheeky asking this, but there's a girl on my team. She's really great. I wondered if you could like have a couple of like mentoring chats with her. But instead of just saying yes, I sat and I thought about it first. And I thought, well, if it's low commitment and I, I'm not committing to something every week or every, you know, every fortnight, or whatever, then yeah, of course, like I'd love to help somebody out. And that's what like, the women in learning piece is all about for me. It's all about paying it forward. Right. And, and that empowering, em- empowering other women to, to take that leap or, you know, providing the additional support as a mentor, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to age myself. So I'll be 51 this summer. Um, And so I obviously I have a lot of years of experience behind me and I've learned some hard lessons. I'm wondering, do you think that our age factors into how, because of our experiences um, of how we're able to, say no or set those oh, boundaries million percent million, million percent so i mean i'm 41 and um i yeah i can't i can't stress enough how, how much i look back on my 30s i mean i don't know if i can swear but cluster um you know there was a lot of that going on and yeah it's a lot of it is age and and, and like yeah. i said i think i think it's to do with i am much more confident in setting my own boundaries now but mm. and then I also think you are probably you have a kind of bigger safety net in terms of your experience and your um network so I think I have a lot more yeah a lot more self-confidence now in being able to say no <clears throat> and focusing on the things that I want to but 100% to kind of reach back you know the kind of the paying it forward into um women in their kind of 20s and and 30s I thought I talked to like I've talked to so many girls who were kind of having babies or have had babies and I'm just like well don't do this don't do that and these are all the bad things I did and you know you can just give them the benefit of your experience and then it's down to them what they do right but I, I think it's I think it's a massive factor age it, it really is, um, you know, thinking of the, the safety net, um, I, I, again, it, it, I know for a fact, there are things in my life that I would have changed, uh, personally and professionally, um, thinking in hindsight. Um, however, at the same time, I wouldn't want to change that because that's who I am. That's, this is, this is me. This is the Sarah at eight, almost 51. Um, and I feel like if I didn't have those life experiences that I just, maybe I wouldn't be working in higher ed where I I love teaching graduate students. Um, I went on and got another master's degree. So I have four degrees behind me um, because I'm interested in instructional design. So, you know, I, I, I think that, um, and is that a safety net for you? The the qualifications and the breadth of what you've got in your arsenal there? I would say, I would say it, 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 it is a safety net. Um, but also, a, um, I felt like it, it was a challenge for me. I mean, I earned my doctorate degree under some very difficult situations being married to my ex-husband. Um, and so it wasn't an easy time in my life. And, but I, I was, I was so determined. Um, that's the one thing, um, my, my determination when I have something in, in front of me um, that I want a goal that I want to attain, I'm going to do it. Um, and and it, it might take me a little bit longer, but, um, you know, it, you know, I, I guess it is a safety net. And I, I think looking at the instructional design, I enjoy, um, 
the, the design and development of courses. Um, so I figured, why not? Why not do that? Why not pick it up and have a little extra, um, you know, if I can do something on the side with, with freelancing or things. But there's so many opportunities. It's just making sure that um, women in, feel supported. And, you know, when I was, when I was working as a counselor, I, I typically worked with women who experience um, domestic violence and, and other abuse and trauma. And, you know, I, many didn't have careers. Many didn't even know what they, what type of food they like to eat because they were told what they should eat. So it's really, we, I think we, we've been doing a better job as, as females of supporting one another. There still is that little bit of, um, what's the word I want to say? Mean, mean girls. Mean girls. Um, That's let's what I call just, it. yeah, let's just not do that. Um, you know, where my strengths lies and where my weak, whatever, you know, all my weaknesses that I have, somebody else is on the flip side of that. And so they can, you know, if we collaborate and we support and, and why not? Why I, not? I, think, I think for me, like, I, I'm really lucky. I feel really lucky. I've got some really amazing mentors and, you know, I, I once went on, um, Danny Seals um, is a is a great guy. He's got a podcast called called Mindchimp, and he gets all his guests to um, give him a like a strap line, like what's your strap line, what's your tagline? And mine was I thought about it because I knew he was going to ask me it, and I said I am a collector and a connector of people. And in terms of like mentors, I I collect people. They don't know that I'm doing it, but I collect them. I put them. I put them in. I put them in a little my pocket. And I meet them and I, you know, and I get to know people and I think, yeah, you're brilliant. I'm going to, I'm going to collect you and then I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to keep in touch with you. And, uh, and there's a huge amount of benefit in that. And, um, <laughs> um, Andrew's, Andrew's just popped up on the chat. So it's dark in Kate's pocket. He's been in there for years. Um, and I think the kind of the, you know, Andrew and I first met because we connected on Twitter and we were sort of, you know, whatever, chatting. And then we just went for coffee. And then, you know, we've been, we've known each other ever since, we've been friends for years. And I think that kind of just being able to reach out and ask people, most people, even if they don't want a formal mentor-mentee relationship, most people, I think, are happy to spend a bit of time. And I find, especially in learning, I think learning people, learning people love to help people. Most people are in this game because they believe in people and they want to help them. And I, what I have benefited from is that, you know, that level of generosity and expertise that people have given me their time. And I've just put somebody in touch with somebody else this week and said, look, he's trying to find a way out of what he's doing. He needs some help. Well, this other guy's gone, oh, I know somebody who could help. Him, put the two yeah. of them in touch and like and and then boom away they're having a conversation it's like it doesn't don't ask don't get right. and most people are really happy to spend a bit of time and spend and and I think that kind of the benefit of the mistakes and the and the things that have gone well and all of those sorts of things you know I, I think if you can find yourself a couple of mentors collect some people and nurture them nurture that relationship nurture that friendship you know, that's probably the biggest piece of advice I could, I could give anybody. I, I, because that's what stood me in good stead, I think. Yeah, this, this, I mean, we, we've talked a lot about different areas of career and, and, and certainly tying in personal life into it. I mean, we could talk about this all day long. Um, <laughs> what are you doing at two? No, I'm joking. Um, but, you know, your, your message of, of, um, collecting I, I that is such a powerful powerful one and, and um i did I encourage everyone to to make that connection um network and 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 stick those people into your pockets and and you never know when obviously they could help you you could help them um let's just continue supporting one another and um across the board 
Yeah, and I mean, there is a, I mean, a bit of a shameless plug, but there is a women in learning LinkedIn group. Um, and there's about, I think there's about 1500 people in that now, men and women. Um, and I would say a lot of my mentors and people that I collect are men as well. I don't think you necessarily have to specifically have women. Um, but there are some great people in that group. And I, I know, you know, I would be willing to bet a large percentage of them would be happy to have conversations and, you know, share the, the you know, the ups and downs and insights and things like that. Of, of their careers I mean I think if I can if I'm in a position to offer any advice the other thing I would say is um again on the same podcast I was asked about being on camera because I do a fair amount I used to do sort of roving reporter things back in the day when we could do events um and I do different things and and you know I was asked how do you kind of find the courage to do that and I think the message is you have to get over yourself. And I think that's really easy to say. But if you can start to put yourself out there, if you can post on LinkedIn, you know, like Andrew blogs all the time. If you can, if you can just put yourself out there a little bit, you know, that that piece that you did about imposter syndrome yeah. on the on the previous um podcast, like be, yeah, come and be a guest on this podcast. And if you can yeah. bear to put if you can bear to put yourself out there. Then you know Brene Brown talks about stepping into the arena. If you if you can just find the courage to step into the arena, what happens is you build your network, you but you collect people, you build from that men mentoring type relationship. But also then what happened to me is that people go, oh, well, there's Kate, and she, you know, and then I'm there when they're thinking about a role. I'm I'm front of you know I was front of mind in in two different scenarios, and I, I think that that you can't. You can't put a price on that, and I think no. if you can be brave and 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 do that, then it, I know it's hard, especially when you're starting off. But, For sure. um, and you know, and 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 some women that I've talked to, and again, it does not have to be be exclusively females. Um, no, I, I no. shared the link to go listen to the imposter syndrome. Listen to all those stories because it, it really helps to see that okay. I am not alone. Like I'm no, not alone. You're in happy, right? Yeah. Because you know what? I tell you, the first time I ever did a podcast, like the sweat was dripping off me. I'm like, I was so nervous. But and and you know, there was nothing perfect. But this was not rehearsed. We just had a conversation. We had mm -hmm. never met. Um, I'm in the <laughs> U.S. You're in the U.K. You know, I'm getting ready to go for a walk in the afternoon. You're gonna get ready for I don't know a drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, I, th I think, yeah, if you can just start, and I, it, I think it's also like, it's like a muscle or a habit, like the more you flex it, the easier it gets. So I think if you can just bear to put yourself out there in any way, whether or not that's posting or your own stuff or reaching out to people asking, say, hey, I think you're amazing. I really love the work you do. Um, you know, kind of, could you spare like 20 minutes for a Zoom chat? I think if I could leave any, everyone with with that kind of thought of, like I say, Brene Brown style stepping out into the arena, then I think career wise, it, it pays off. It might not be, it might not be a short term gain, but long term. Oh yeah, this is this is this is a long term life type of 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 thing that we need yeah. to do. Um, you know, such a powerful remark to um to end our our talk and. Again, it was such a pleasure to to meet with you and and to talk and um, I wish you the best in in your next role. Well, what what I realised, Sarah, is I've collected you now, so it's you. There you go. <laughs> awesome! I'm going to start collecting now. Well, thank you again for this wonderful discussion. No, thank you. I say it all the time, but I'm so very honoured to be in the room when we record these episodes. I get so much from listening to smart people talking about smart things with authenticity, honesty and openness. We're so very grateful to Sarah and Kate for such a brilliant conversation and, like last week, for keeping me busy throughout the recording. There are loads of links to catch up with and you'll find them all in the show notes. Similarly, our contact details are in the show notes. We're recording some more episodes imminently, and if you want to be involved, please do get in touch. You can email, tweet, or use the contact form on the website, womentalkingaboutlearning.com. As always, 
We thank you for listening, and we'll see you again soon.